for all sorts of purposes and serving all of the country we live in. on the open road, you get along fine. No worries about schedule here. You can even pick up and set down where the passengers want. Fair enough. But sooner or later, wherever it starts, wherever it goes, a bus service has to come into a town. And that's where trouble begins. Thank you. 
son of where they are, one day everything will come to a stop everywhere. Then what? It's all these private cars pouring into the towns that cause the trouble. The main roads are full of them, usually with only one person in each hatback. They ought to be banned. Look at the road space they take up. Two cars take up as much room as one bus that can carry 60 or 70 people. And when the cars get into the town, there's got to be somewhere for them to park. The more parking facilities are provided, the more motorists will use their cars. And it'll be the same thing all over again, cars parked at the curbside everywhere. There's a lot of people cause more obstruction than we motorists do. Lorries, for instance. Delivery vans? Well, the shopkeepers have got to have stuff collected and delivered, haven't they? Or they'd go out of business, wouldn't they? Can't help it if goods vehicles slow the traffic down. It's always starting and stopping at traffic lights. Slows everybody down. Makes the traffic bunch. Then what happens? Before you know it, your junctions are jammed solid. Too many vehicles trying to use streets that were never designed to carry them. So what can we do? Pull everything down and widen the street. Ban private cars from town centres. Privileges for buses. More car parks. One-way streets. Freedom of movement. Restrict delivery times. Restrict! Well, there are all sorts of things that can be done to help the traffic problem, and are being done successfully. Boldly conceived one-way systems, for example may mean buses having to go a longer way round, and you having to walk a bit farther to the bus stop. But they certainly keep the traffic rolling along nicely, and increase road capacity. Commercial vehicles over three tons must use the ring road. That's good. And they find them a fiver if they don't. A bit confusing at first, but it makes sense. Get in lane. Yes. A bit more lane discipline everywhere would make a big difference. And that's all right, too, providing the buses have somewhere to stop. And then you've got experiments like the police control by closed-circuit television in Durham. A tangled town as ever there was one. You know, the basis of the problem remains the same. How to provide a fair share of the roads for all the people that have to use them. To meet emergencies. To get your letters to the post. To collect the rubbish. To deliver the goods. and to carry people. In other words, to carry people and the things they need for everyday living. People who, for all sorts of reasons, want to go from where they are to somewhere else. Who need transport. Who need to convey goods to. It's for them, for us, that the town centres and the roads and the services of the future are being planned. Of course, it's easy enough when you're building from scratch, from the ground up. Segregation, that's the byword. Segregation of people on foot from vehicles. Well, there you have your central shopping precinct. 
plenty of traffic-free room to move about and meet and gossip and leave the baby in safety while you shop. Right alongside the central bus stop. Buses bringing people in from their homes nearby, or even from places farther afield, right to where they want to be, within easy reach of shops and business centre. And the market. There are still plenty of people who like to buy and sell in a traditional street market, even in a new town like Basildon. So we've given them one. Traders with shops in the precinct have service access to the backs of their shops, which keeps vehicles loading and unloading out of the way. And the rest of the space is for car parking. But what's the point of using a car when a bus brings you virtually from door to door? It's all very nice. But what do you do in an old town that doesn't lend itself to that sort of thing? That's where I live. A town centred round a cathedral. You can't pull that down for replanning. Of course, the streets are narrow and higgledy piggledy, but a lot of people come into the centre each day, and there's a good bit of traffic. So they've made the whole of the centre of the town into a one-way system, and most of the buses have to go round the outside. Then they've turned the marketplace into a car park, and they're now parking in the main street, too. Of course, the bus station has to be outside the one-way part, and it's quite a long walk to the shops, though, for the kids to get to school. You'd think, wouldn't you, that they might make a bit more room in the centre for bus stops, and a bit less, perhaps, for parking cars. You might well think that especially when you consider that the riders in all those cars probably wouldn't muster a busload between them. It's just the sort of question that has to be answered when the centres of towns and cities are replanned for the people and the traffic of the future. And both are continually increasing. Take a scheme like this, for example. One of several considered for the area. At present, the area is a clutter of ancient shops and dwellings and offices. Into it comes a great deal of traffic from one of the city's main arteries, with long-established public buildings on either side. Through the middle of it goes a winding, not very wide, hilly street leading to and from the port. Another road comes into it from below. Because of this difference in levels, the area could be redesigned with a huge service area for traders and multi-storey car parking underground, and shopping precincts, offices and housing above. Landscaped roundabouts at either end of a new road would help to keep the traffic moving freely. One of the new precincts, which replaces an old and ugly square, would be flanked on one side by a multi-storey block for government offices, and on the other by an hotel and the city air terminal. These two blocks, used by large numbers of people, are sited right alongside the central bus station for out-of-town and long-distance services, which is already there. With private cars and traders' vehicles underground, the new road would be virtually free for through traffic and the corporation's bus services, providing direct access to the shopping precincts and offices, and the housing, entertainment centres and other amenities which the development would contain. Planning which has these ideas about the handling of road transport 
is the kind of planning we like to see. The bus operator's philosophy is that it's his job to get people from where they are as near as possible to where they want to be at the time they want to go. To do this, he not only has to work out the best and most useful route and get permission to use them, he is faced with the problem of peak demand followed by periods when buses run pretty well empty. He has to subsidize unprofitable services to isolated places by the revenue from the profitable ones. He sometimes has to provide services where others no longer exist because they have proved to be uneconomic. Otherwise, parts of the country may be left completely cut off. And he has to do all this and maintain his schedules and an efficient service in spite of the growing congestion which is choking the cities and towns of the country. Congestion can be overcome. It has to be overcome. Without destroying the beauty of historic towns and cities, replanning, improved roads, new bridges can all contribute. When it can be properly operated, the bus is our best user of road space per passenger carriage. There can be no doubt that it has a leading part to play in setting free the flow.